Okay, friends, here we go. I've got native in instruments complete. I got main stage. I want to do some rehearsal with the singer for before I go to the studio. And for that, I need the playback of uh, the tracks we have in the studio already are mixing. And uh, I need the instruments uh, um, here uh, to do this sort of live feeling, maybe even use it in a live situation. So how do I start? Uh, I made different channels here. On the first channel is P Modart Piano Tech. Uh, on the second channel is a Moog, uh, Mini Moog by Arturia. And third is, I think it's Omnisphere, or Arturia, OBX, I, yeah, that's it. And on this channel here is the playback. Then I can start the playback here. As you see, and my problem was, um, how do I change these different instruments while the playback is running without stopping it? And this is what is happening right now here. So I'll show you later on how it's working. And uh, I just play along that to, to demonstrate how it's working. Here's here. So easy stuff. Pop music. Switch over to the brass. And then brass and piano bass together. Stop the playback here, as you see, everything is working. Even uh, um, the volume of the piano could be controlled here, you see it on the screen. This volume of uh, the second one. And this brass also. And they all can, can be played together, yes? Best way is this one. So this is really convenient. I made a lot of songs here uh, to do a whole program like that. But how did I do it in main stage? And I'm going to show you that right now. After uh, I edited some channels in here, uh, like software instruments, like this piano tag, ES2, it, it wasn't, was not, uh, Arturia and OBX, and this playback thing. And this playback thing, uh, I'm going to uh, edit there uh, in, in file, I've chosen the playback. I already made in Logic and took out the uh, voices I have now here that I play live now. I just took them out and exported it as a file and put it in here. So uh, how do I start it? I just make this little window. You probably know you can, you can take the tools like faders and buttons and put them up here. Then you click on one button and uh, once you've chosen one button like this one here, you just go in here uh, into the infos down there and uh, you say a parameter. Parameter zuweisen, that's in German. You can uh, choose parameter and uh, choose this button here. And uh, once you've done this, um, you just uh, press the button and it has the function, yes. Um, in, within layout, uh, you can then, uh, if you've chosen the button here, you can then choose the, uh, the channel and the number of the controller. And the good thing here is that the controllers are written in here, in complete control. This is 116. So I said, uh, choose 116 controller uh, to uh, switch via this button that is attached to uh, the play button of uh, the player within this channel. And immediately it has this function. That's all you, you need to know. It's quite easy. Uh, the other things are, uh, I've uh, put in some channels here and do the same thing. Uh, um, uh, I take it, uh, say parameter, uh, choose parameter, go to this uh, fader here and attach it. And uh, um, after that, I go into layout and say, okay, this should be controller number 14. And within complete control, it's written number 14. And once I uh, use it, it's working like this. Same with the others here, you see. Uh, I, I can control everything, even the playback uh, uh, has a, a controller. Uh, the only thing is uh, the master controller here. Uh, that one uh, is one uh, layer above it. You have to go up here 
to my concert and there you can uh, say uh, this uh, attached to the master uh, um, fader. It's not working within uh, the patch here. That was quite easy and the, uh, the last thing to do was, and that was the trick, um, you have mute, mutes uh, within the different channels here and I just have uh, attached a few buttons like I've said. Uh, choose the button here, but put a button in, choose it, say parameter, uh, choose here mute for this parameter and then say within layout uh, this is controller number 112 or whatever. It depends on your MIDI keyboard, sometimes you need some um, printed stuff to see which controller is on which button. Um, I think there's also a le learning uh, um, thing in here, but that's how it works. So as you see here, I can choose with the different buttons and I can start the whole thing and uh, uh, put in this here and that's it. And then after that have fun here, yes. Also for rehearsing and whatever you, you do, this is really a fantastic solution for me. And uh, once you made it one time, yes, uh, you can go in here and dif uh, do different songs. I have so many here like this one. Start it immediately. Everything is in there. Yes, it's immediately and all the instruments are in there. This is really astonishing how fast it works. And this is a different to use, uh, use logic on this. Okay, yes, yeah, stop it. Go to the next one. Everything a remote control, yes, uh, even a ballad like this one here. to rehearse this. Uh, you can do, even do it for a live show. If you're working on a big stage, you can rehearse with this. And uh, what I've told you, the difference is uh, it's easily done. I think even th this right part here, um, the whole adaption, I've got always got four things like uh, piano keys for the main thing. I got a solo part and I got some brass or pads or whatever and this playback. And once you have this, you can uh, import it to all the other things here and use it there. And so that's pretty fast uh, and you can have uh, very, very fast. You, you can uh, rehearse with that and do things like that. And the, the plugins are really changing with the blink of the eye. Yes, this is really... So have fun with that. Uh, I thought, hope it was a little bit uh, helpful and yeah, I didn't know how it works, but now I know probably there are some other solutions. Uh, don't forget to subscribe here and um, see you next time. Bye bye.